Springfield Armory Goes to Hollywood is a new exhibit at the Armory that looks at the many firearms used in motion pictures throughout the years, many with a connection to the Armory. Springfield Armory National Historic Park Superintendent James Woolsey and exhibit curator Alex McKenzie discuss the new exhibit with Connecting Points' Jim Madigan. Traveling around, we've seen uh, uh, several similar exhibits. You know, it's always intriguing when you see stuff that was used in Hollywood movies, you know, real things used by actors on the screen. And uh, I've seen several uh, uh, successful exhibits uh, using uh, uh, firearms, and it was interesting looking at it, seeing how many actually had former lives in, you know, coming from Springfield Armory. Um, you know, you expect to see something like that in. Uh, military films, war films, where you have portrayals of the U.S. Army, which of course they would be carrying uh, armory weapons. Um, but then you see kind of the uh, uh, offbeat things where you wouldn't expect to see them. And uh, you, you see a lot of that in the exhibit too. Uh, so this was a real fun one to put together. I want to talk about that more, but Superintendent Woolsey, th this to me has got to be exactly the kind of thing you want to do because for all kinds of reasons, you want people to come to the Springfield Armory site and when you've got something like this to show them, it's even more interesting and attractive, it seems. Oh, absolutely. I mean, one of the things that we've been really trying to do the last couple of years is boost visitation. Um, and so we've been doing a lot of things. Um, we've installed freeway signs. Uh, we've had concerts and other events. And in fact, our visitation did go up about 10 or 15% last year. So it's been effective. But I think exhibits like this and, you know, having bright young minds like Alex dreaming up um, really innovative exhibits are, is a fantastic thing to do. Alex McKenzie, I'm going to pick up right where you, you know, left off in your last answer. Had to be a fun exhibit, but a challenging exhibit, I would think, to figure out and put together. Yeah, the, uh, uh, one of the bigger challenges was working with uh, the current Hollywood prop shops that, that still have all these uh, objects as active pieces of, of their collections where they work on uh, current movies. And trying to, you know, get the objects from Hollywood back here to Springfield uh, was an interesting challenge that, uh, to, to deal with. Um, but then uh, uh, trying to find uh, uh, pieces that were in particular movies or, you know, in, in a lot of cases we just said, hey, you know, show us something that was uh, made in Springfield and, you know, going back and forth. I mean, tons and tons of movies. Was that a big part of it to, to try and depict things that actually <clears throat> were products of the Springfield Army because, I mean, all kinds of different weapons and in many cases millions and millions of them right. were made. Yeah, and, and one of the really interesting stories that came out that we had on exhibit was in the early days of film, uh, they ended up, you know, when they had to recreate weapons, they actually ended up taking the obsolete surplus uh, Springfield Armory made trapdoor weapons, which were standard army issue from about the 1870s through the early 1890s. But by the 1920s or 1930s, they were, you know, surplus. There were a lot of them around. They were cheap. So the movie studios grabbed them up and started refabricating them into various pieces depending upon the genre of the movie. So we've got, you know, old Springfield trapdoors that were made into pirate pistol or an old blunderbuss for a pilgrim movie or, a, or an Arabic uh, musket for a uh, North African themed uh, uh, movie. And so that's really the, the, the beginning of the exhibit. Let me ask you about one <clears throat> specifically weapon that's on display in the exhibit type of rifle, the M1, that was really the infantry rifle of World War II. I don't know if, how many millions of them must have been produced at the Armory. This is the weapon that was used in the blockbuster in the 1970s, Jaws. Absolutely. Yeah, there were about three and a half million of those uh, made at Springfield Armory during World War II. Uh, so there were a lot around. Uh, the, after it had its service life, it, it did end up getting into the studios and uh, uh, being used in the movie Jaws, and we were able to contact the uh, prop house that still had it in their prop collection, and uh, it, was, uh, it was used in the movie. And the neat thing is, once we got it, we were able to see the serial number, and it stamped Springfield Armory, and it was made there in 1943 as part of the overall war effort. And it's great to see that it had this uh, second life in Hollywood. And who knows what story I mean, that weapon could tell, not only just being in the exhibit, but where it's been and uh, quite a story. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Superintendent Woolsey, yes, these are the kind of things I think sometimes that <clears throat> we locally especially, <clears throat> excuse me, may forget. It's so much a part. I mean, Springfield Armory, 
has been a part of keeping this nation safe and free for an awful long time. And this is kind of a fun way to bring that point to people, it seems. Oh, I think it's a great way to do that. And I think, you know, it's interesting for me. I've worked in lots of national parks uh, around the country and a lot around the world. And it seems like a lot of times local people don't really understand the importance of their own history. And a place like the Springfield Armory that was, you know, nationally and internationally significant, um, this is a great way for people to really, you know, chomp on and understand the history of their own place. Okay, this exhibit is there through the summer into the fall. Let's talk about some other, you got a lot of other things coming up. There's always something going on at the Armory. Memorial Day, Monday, May 25th, concert by the U.S. Coast Guard Band. So we're gonna have a series of concerts, um, and so that'll be the first one of the season. Uh, for uh, Armory Day, um, we're gonna have a dance troupe that will be there, so we'll have a series of concerts throughout the summer. And if people are interested, pop into the Armory. We have schedules printed, and, and you're welcome to learn them. You know, another interesting thing that we're going to do, on May 15th, we're hosting a symposium on the Precision Valley. And precision manufacturing was a thing that really defines the Connecticut River Valley. I, I think can be argued that that's really probably one of the most significant things that happened in the United States, and certainly in this area. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at that and bring in scholars, and they're going to look at the place of Connecticut River um, in the industrial history of the United States. So again, if people are interested in that, hop on by the Armory and, and they're welcome to come see that event. I want to draw you out a little bit more on the Saturday, June 20th event, Armory Day. That's always a real cool family day. You mentioned there's going to be Civil War uh, music and dance troupe. And one of the things I found interesting always, you're going to have uh, people there, living history groups, representing all different periods because the Armory has produced weapons from, what, the War of 1812, right up through and, and on Korea, you're going to have a lot of different groups here to talk. Absolutely. So, you know, typically we have um, reenactors who do encampments, and it's a wonderful place for people to come and kind of see history in, in the flesh, but also to, you know, kind of ask questions about firearms or camp life or the military life. Um, and so all those things will be there. Actually, one of the more interesting things, and you could talk about this, is we're going to show a movie at Armory Day. Yeah. Actually, well, it just so happens that June 20th, 2015 is the 40th anniversary of the release of Jaws. <laughs> so there's that M1 rifle, and we got that as our, our centerpiece for our exhibit. And so we'll be getting a nice outdoor screen with a sound system and uh, have an evening screening of the classic Jaws out back behind the museum. Superintendent James Woolsey from the Springfield Armory National Historic Site. Alex McKenzie, curator for Springfield Armory, goes to Hollywood. Thank you both for coming and spending some time with us. Thank you for having us.